Good morning, this is Diane Moore with the Chattanooga Public Library. Oh no, that's not what I look like, although some mornings I feel like that after too much chocolate ice cream. That's a yard monster that we're working on whose inner mouth will become a bird feeder area. We're sharing the tent outside with him because this morning is a glorious morning if you're a mushroom. Which leads me to a bad joke a couple of my coworkers told. Why did everyone want to date the mushroom? Because he was a fun guy. Oh well. <laughs> so in here, in a little pot, had a couple of other real cute little mushrooms yesterday in one of my staghorn ferns, but they only last about a day. I'm not sure what these are, but they are just stinking cute little mushrooms. And mushrooms are great to eat. And mushrooms have been popping up everywhere. Mushrooms love wood. Mushrooms love trees. However, if you see mushrooms on your tree that they call conch, looks kind of like waves of mushroom instead of on stalks. They're beautiful. They can be all different sorts of colors. That's a really bad sign. That means that your tree has some issues and you need to call an arborist to look at it. Now, if it's already an old rotten tree in the woods, who cares? Leave it alone. There are all sorts of mushrooms. And one of my beds right over here, you can see that. I'll get close for a minute. I don't want to get too close because I don't want to dampen my phone any more than I need to. You can see that this bed is okay. It's got some tomato plants, but a bunch of flowers and some other sorts of plants in it. But compared to the other beds, that are green and full of plants, it doesn't look that great. For a lot of mornings, it was full of inky spot or inky cap, whatever they are, mushrooms. I had to remake this video from the other day because I kept calling them inky spot, and I believe they're inky cap. There's a couple of different kinds. There's a shaggy one. According to mushroom experts, most people die from eating raw mushrooms, not cooked mushrooms. However, there are so many kinds of mushrooms in the world. When we were children and we moved from the city to the south, my mother would let us go out in the woods, probably to get a little bit of peace of mind. And there were amazing mushrooms out in the woods that hadn't been disturbed for years. I can remember one that was white with little red dots on it that actually had some kind of red liquid. Of course, we knew better than to try to eat them. It was also my favorite. It looked like a stair step, a spiral staircase. And it was pretty big too. And it was blue. It was so beautiful. We would collect all these amazing, wonderful mushrooms. And then we would bring them home and see if they were something that mom could cook. We ate puff balls. We ate coral mushrooms, which I didn't know then. I cannot pronounce it. They're French mushrooms that are orange and look like a a wine cup or something. They're called, uh, they're chantelles or something. But uh, I thought, oh, there could no way be other mushrooms that look just like this. Guess what there are? There are poisonous versions of those mushrooms. So be very careful when you collect mushrooms. It may cost a little more. You can go to someone like Two Angels Mushrooms. You can Google that. Not only do they sell mushrooms and raise them, but they're mushroom experts they are qualified to go out and forage for mushrooms and find the ones like the morels and other things that won't take you in. And out in the Northwest, they hunt mushrooms. They have their own little areas. It's a little bit like the people here with their ginseng patches. Make sure you're not encroaching upon their territory because they will not like it. Yeah, you may hear a boom of thunder or the boom of a shotgun. Now, Mushrooms, if they bother you, knock them over, put them in the garbage. If you have toddlers or dogs who like to explore and try to eat everything, I had one of those children once. I don't think she ever ate any mushrooms though. A lot of other strange things. However, the mushroom is just the fruiting part. There's a whole system of fine little roots, if you will, or fibers that run through your soil. And if you look on the back of a lot of fertilizer now, you'll see that. The mite, which I won't pronounce this correctly either, mycorrhizal fungi, they actually have a symbiotic relationship with 
other things that are growing. People are using some mushrooms like wine caps now, just planting them right on in there and their, their corn or their vegetables, it actually helps things grow. If you get some uh, hazelnut or oak or pecan trees and they've got some spore in them already, wait five to seven years and you can have truffles. So they're not always bad, they can be a really good thing and they actually are part of the reason that we don't plow 90 miles down under the ground anymore. Once we've plowed something up, then we try to just surface treat it. Just dig down a little, break it up. You don't want hard, crusty soil, nothing likes that. Recently, when we were watching a Master Gardener monthly video, a gentleman from UT, Alan, whose last name I can't remember, but he has a twin brother, they both have PhDs and another brother in the plant sciences. Amazing guy, and he said, you know, there's just not that much nutrition in bark, answering someone's plant question. Now that is why the bed that I showed you a little bit earlier over here looks okay and it's starting to recover compared to all the ones that are just full of wonderful happy vegetables. Okay, the brown over there, those are my pea vines. It's time for them to go away and the Minnesota midget melons to get planted in their place. It's just too hot for them. However, everything else is pretty happy and producing really well. For a long time, that's all I really got in that bed were some mushrooms. The rest of the plants just sort of sat there like they were heading to space and they were in deep sleep. Once I put some fertilizer and some manure from the farm, now that is a choice. My family farm, barn, the manure has been composting for a very long time, but you shouldn't compost something with freshish manure and then harvest anytime soon. You need to give it a little bit of time for anything to work its way out of that. And you can always buy black cow compost or mushroom compost or other fertilizers and things that you can put on in a couple of days harvest. However, a lot of the soil that we have nowadays is made up of a lot of crunched up wood and a lot of bark. Nothing wrong with that. To a degree, it'll compost, it will break down, it will make wonderful, rich dirt. That isn't the old stuff that used to be just kind of really hard, packed dirt. In fact, I'm gonna take a chance, I'm gonna walk out here to the front because I just wanna show you. In the past, if you had holes in your soil, then you would just buy, excuse the air conditioner, really cheap topsoil because it was super heavy you could fill those holes and it wouldn't get blown away or washed away. It would just sit there until your grass could grow up over it. Now the last time that I bought a bag of cheap topsoil and then dumped it out. Oops, there's Ginger. Good morning, Ginger. Are you gardening or complaining? Hasn't had its kitty treats yet. The last time I got it, this is what it looked like. mostly bark or wood chopped up. Now I think I've talked about that a little before at Plant Delights Nursery. They have a big mountain of chopped up wood and bark and things like that. They line their paths with it and they have so much traffic people stomp and tromp it down and then before you know it it's all composted and they throw it into their berms for things to grow. But until it grows, there's not a lot of nutrition in it, and it is robbing your plants of nitri uh, nitrogen, sorry, still early, that they need in order to grow. So if you're gonna use that kind of dirt, augment it with manures, compost, core, peat moss, whatever you can, and make sure you feed your plants. If they look a little bit yellow, or they're just sitting there staring at you like these things did for a long time and the bed producing nothing but wood loving mushrooms, then you'll know that's the problem. But mushrooms are our friends. When I was a little kid, nothing was more exciting than seeing a fairy ring and we loved puff balls when they would let out their smoke. My dad, of course, who'd grown up in the South, didn't enjoy those things and he refused to eat that. In fact, once, 
my grandmother would send us books and all this incredible information about wild edibles and the whole thing, yeah, eating pine bark, you name it. But it was a lot of fun. And I went out into our fields and out into the backyard and the garden and I gathered lamb's quarters and who knows what all kinds of edible things that I got. And I put it on the table proudly for dinner that night. And my father looked at it and he said, is that supposed to be a centerpiece or a dish? And I said, oh dad, that's a salad made of wild things. And he looked at it and he looked at me and he said, if I wanted to eat things like that, I would go graze out in the field with cows. <laughs> However, yes, monster, you would. Monster would eat it. Mushrooms are our friends, not our enemies. And if they bother you, knock them down, put them in your compost or throw them in the woods or somewhere. But just enjoy how beautiful, how cute they are. And remember that they provide an important service to us. Yes, you don't want to see conch or mushrooms growing on your favorite tree, but out in the woods you do because it means that those mushrooms are breaking that tree down and making wonderful compost for the forest and keeping our world going. Thank you, be safe, have a wonderful day. Don't eat any raw mushrooms unless you know what they are.